In the next few minutes, you're going to master the pen tool and we're gonna start by creating this letter G, but by the end, you will be able to pen tool absolutely anything. Now there's three main steps for this very specific technique to work. First, we're gonna learn where to place the anchor points. Second, we're gonna learn how to create them. And third, we're gonna learn how to edit them without screwing everything up. Get all three right, you're golden, hunky-dory, everything's good. Get just one of these wrong and all hell will break loose. Just pure chaos. So here you can see I have an italicized O. And what we're gonna do is first of all, demonstrate this technique with the pen tool. And then we're gonna try something exponentially harder. But before we dive into this, I need to demonstrate how this technique works. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is grab the pencil tool and we need to look at these curves and we need to identify where the curves either flatten out or change direction. So using this top one as an example, if I follow this curve up here, you can see it flattens out or it reaches its peak around about here. So we're gonna put a little cross there. And then if we do the same on the right-hand side, we'll follow it round. There we go. We'll put a little cross there where it flattens out. We're gonna do the same at the bottom. And then we're gonna do one more over here. Now these four locations that I've marked, this is where I need to place my anchor points. But before we get to that, a big thank you to Logitech for sponsoring this video and sending over their MX Creative Console, which is proving to be a very useful addition to my setup. So I've got some key points here that I'm gonna talk through now, but no one said that I couldn't make it sexy. It's made up of two parts, the keypad with nine customizable LCD keys and the dial pad for precise tactile control over zooming, adjustments, and navigation. It also works seamlessly with apps like Illustrator, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. And you can get started straight out of the box with the pre-built profiles, or customize everything using the Logi Options Plus software and grab plugins, icon packs, and more from the marketplace. There's also the Actions Ring, a virtual dial with eight control bubbles. And this is perfect for making quick adjustments on the fly and fine tuning settings for specific tools. It's also made using recycled plastic and aluminium. It includes a three month Adobe Creative Cloud All Apps membership worth $180. Oh yes. And there's a link below if you'd like to find out more and thank you to Logitech for sponsoring this video. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Okay, so this is where our four points are gonna go. Let's get rid of these and let's go and grab the pencil. And then we're gonna place our first point. But another mistake that people often make is doing this. So we're going up and down and all over the place. So instead for this technique to work, we need to hold down shift. And some people refer to this method as the clock, but essentially here, if we think about this in the context of a clock, these horizontal handles here are moving between three and nine on a clock. So this is a great starting point. And then if we let go, it wants to continue this curve. And we're gonna to move to our second point, which was over here. Remember, this is where the curve either flattens or changes direction. And then to complete this clock analogy, we're gonna click and drag. Again, we're not doing this, we're holding shift. And this is going to snap to what would be 12 and six on a clock. So every single point that you create by dragging, it has to be created horizontally or vertically. Now there is another instance where you kind of have it on an angle and we'll come back to that one a bit later in the video. And the most important things here are the placement and position of the anchor points. So let's go and do our next one here. Click and drag holding shift, pull this out. Now oftentimes you'll see here, we just can't quite get it perfect when we first create that, but it doesn't matter as long as we've put the anchor point in the right place, we're all good. And then we'll do our next one here. So it kind of flattens out around about this part. So click and drag holding shift. Again, we're going 12 and six on a clock, so straight up. And you'll see that curve down there looks terrible. Now don't panic, as long as the placement of the anchor point is correct, we can easily fix this in a moment. So now of course, we're gonna go right back to the beginning. And we're gonna click and drag holding shift, horizontally of course, three and nine. And you might be thinking, Dan, that is awful. How on earth did you survive this long? Well, this is where the magic happens because we positioned the anchor points in the right place and we've also placed the handles either horizontally or vertically. Now you might be thinking, come on, Ginger, how do we fix this? Well, what we do is we go and select the direct selection tool 
And then with the direct selection tool, we're going to click and drag. Now, if you click on the path, you'll see these handles appear, which is great, but we don't want to do this. Oh, we don't want to do that. We want to make any changes holding shift. You can see it snaps vertically. And then we just have to hop between the two handles here that control this curve. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of back and forth just to try and adjust these. And you don't really want to go beyond that anchor point on the right. So you want to kind of stay within the bounding box of the shape. But we're going to pull this probably to about here. And then we're going to come back down again, clicking and dragging, holding shift. Or maybe let's try it the other way. We'll pull this one up. And then holding shift, we'll pull this one in. Now, if you really can't get it in the right place, you can see here, no matter what I try, it's just not quite right. Usually that means the anchor point is slightly off. So what I could do in this example is maybe I'll just grab this one. And again, I'm holding shift here. I'm just going to pull it to the right. And then if I bring this out, uh, move this down. There you go. You can see that is much better. Now, of course, I could spend forever fine tuning that. And to be honest, I probably will later on. But anyway, that's one. Let's move on to the others. Again, grab the direct selection tool. And then we're going to click and drag holding shift. and Just try and get this in a much better position to match the curve. There we go. That's pretty good. That was a little bit easier. Now, this one is awful. But as you can see, because we've positioned our anchor points correctly to fix this, it's very quick and easy. So what we're going to do is just pull this one down, slide this one in, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Pretty good. Last but not least, we're going to drag up again, holding shift, and then we'll pull this one out, maybe. And then we'll come down with this one. Beautiful. There we go. So if I switch into outline mode now, I can just select everything. And you can see those are our four anchor points. And you can see the handles here are vertical. And on this one, they're horizontal. Over here, they're vertical again. And then the top one, they're horizontal as well. Now, rather than use the same technique over again, which is kind of boring, like where's the fun in that? What we're going to do now is instead of using four anchor points, we're going to do it with two. So what we're going to do is grab the pencil. Again, find that point where the curve flattens. Click and drag holding shift. Bring this all the way down here. Click and drag holding shift. And then connect this back. Click and drag holding shift. Now, of course, that does look awful. But remember, the name of the game is to create these shapes with as few anchor points as possible. And there is another tool that we can use that isn't the pen tool, but they are very close friends and it can achieve exactly what we're trying to do. So let's click and hold on the pen tool, go down to anchor point tool. And then what we can do is we can click and hold at any point on this path and we can move it out. Now, the reason this tool is somewhat unique is that we can actually click at any point and then push this part of the path out specifically. Now you'll see that our handles are kind of going on all sorts of angles. So there is a little bit of a trade off here. But if you do choose to use this tool and your anchor points, maybe they're not quite straight or whatever, but you get a good end result. Ultimately, that is what matters. Yeah. So what I could do now is press A to switch back to the direct selection tool and then just bring this part in here and fine tune this. And we could do the same over here as well. OK, so that looks pretty good. What we're going to do now is select everything, press Shift X to swap that stroke to a fill. And then from the Pathfinder panel, we're going to knock out the counter and this will give us our correctly pen tooled letter O. So to recap, we've looked at how to create Bezier curves, where to position the anchor points, and then how to edit the curves. Now it's time for the final boss. And yes, we're going to pen tool this thing. And I promise you that as horrific as this looks, following the techniques that we've just covered, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Right, so first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to zoom in a little bit, press Command or Control R to bring up rulers. And what we're going to do is drag out some guides and line this up to the shape that we're trying to pen tool. And this was a handy tip from Raquel, someone from our community. Haha, <laughs> thank you, Raquel, you absolute legend. What we're going to do is drag this out to every single vertical and horizontal point where we would go and create an anchor point. 
Now, normally I would use the guides, but I'm going to keep them turned off just so you and me can both see what on earth I'm doing. And I'm going to use quite a thin stroke just so I can actually see how good the line work is. So we'll create our first one. Now, because this is a sharp point, we are just going to click and then drag this out. Click and drag holding shift and we'll press shift X to swap the fill to a stroke. And then come down here, click and drag holding shift. Remember the placement is more important than the initial curve we create because we can always come back and fine tune that after. Now it wants to do something like this. If it does this and you really don't want to do a big long curly thing like this, what you can do is press escape and then just click and drag holding shift from that point and it will create a new handle. Now, when you have something like this that kind of starts on a little bit of a curve and then bends the other way, what you can do is remember, we're just looking for this point where it flattens here. So we'll click and drag holding shift and look at that. It matches that pretty nicely. Okay, for this bit, just like we did on the letter O, click and drag holding shift. And then we'll find it down here again. Click and drag holding shift. Now what we can do is we'll add an extra point here. And this one here is quite unique because as you can see, horizontal or vertical, neither of them line up. So when you start working with angles, what you want to do is you want to line up these handles with the angle of the line that you're pen tooling. So you can see here, this is the line that I want to follow. And then again, up here, we've just got another flat one. So click and drag holding shift as we've done a thousand times before at this point. Okay, down here, another easy one. Click and drag holding shift. All right, all the way down here. Click and drag holding shift. And then the next one is all the way up here. Click and drag holding shift. And you'll probably be hearing these words in your sleep tonight. Click and drag holding shift. Ugh, please don't hate me. Right, we'll go up here. I'm gonna stop saying click and drag holding shift, but you get the idea. So we're going to put another point here and then we'll do another one here. Click and drag holding shift. So what we're going to do for this point is again, it wants to do a big long curly thing. We're just going to click to cut that and then click and drag holding shift to drag out a fresh curve. And then again, we're just looking for that part where the curve either gets flatter or it changes direction. So we'll click and I'm not even going to say it at this point. And there you go. You get a nice smooth curve. And here we've got another vertical one that we're going to place. Now, if you'd like to try it out for real, you should be able to pen tool the rest of this letter using the tools and techniques that we've covered so far. Okay, so all of the anchor points, they're now in the correct place, which is perfect. That's the hard part. Now we just have to go in and adjust all of the curves. Now the goal when pen tooling is to use as few anchor points as possible. And this is just gonna make your life easier and less frustrating if you want to edit those curves, but also it's gonna give you a much more professional end result. So let's go and grab this tool here, the delete anchor point tool. And then what we're gonna do is hold down shift and click on specific anchor points. So this one here, for example, if I click on this holding shift, 
it will try and connect the other two anchor points either side of it. And you can see by doing that, the path itself didn't actually change all that much, but we've actually just removed an anchor point that was clearly unnecessary. Right, last of all, hide the original layer that we were tracing and then select everything. Press Shift X to swap the stroke to a fill. Click minus front. And there we go, we have our finished, perfectly pen tooled letter G. And there we go, that is the video. So a big thank you to Logitech for sponsoring this one. And if you've got any questions on using the pen tool, please do drop them down below. But as always, take care and I'll see you next time. I don't know what this hand's doing. This hand is gesticulating on its own. Take care and I'll see you next time. <laughs>